Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X dot E dot L dot O. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for coming back. But if you are new here, do me a favor and like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. So I'll let you know when I drop another video and make sure you leave in the comment section and say, I'm new here. All right. So today what I'm going to be talking about is going over the fades, ins and outs of Cakewalk whether that be with just the faders, on audio, on MIDI, on the master, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk, and this is my light theme. If you're interested in this theme or my darting, I have a link below in the description that you can download this for free. Let me just set up some audio and then we can get right into it. All right, so I picked out two samples that I want to use in this video. Uh, basically, it's just, uh, hammers and waves sample and a drum loop that I got from the Daryl Banks uh, drum loop. So the easiest way to do a fade inside of Cakewalk is if you go up here, as you see here with this line, it has a triangle there. So this triangle means that you can actually do a fade on this track from the beginning, or you can do it at the end of any track. So if you make um, a cut somewhere in the middle here, so let's say we do it at this four bar mark, right? Now I'm just going to hit the S on my keyboard to split it. So now I have two pieces in here and I can also have a fade in here as well. And um, if I wanted to, I can click on this one and drag it over and it'll set the crossfade for that sample. So as you see here, and now it's crossfaded. So I have a fade on both sides just from moving them over one another and layering them, right? And to ensure that you have that set up, you wanna go to your options and hit on this that says auto crossfade. So basically anytime you go or overlap over another sample, it'll automatically crossfade. This auto crossfade also goes for if, uh, I'm just gonna control Z here. So this also goes for if you do the alt and you have the little scissors here, this little scissors icon, just make sure you're on the smart tool because the smart tool will allow you to actually do all of these uh, features that I'm gonna be demonstrating in here, all right? So if you do the little scissors and you cut, is gonna do an automatic crossfade. That's where that automatic crossfade under these options come in handy. So make sure you have this checked if you're a person gonna be using uh, crossfades. You can also set up your types if you want to. So whatever your fade in, you can have it to slow curve or fast curve. The default uh, for your uh, out fade as well can be a slow curve or a fast curve. And you can even change the crossfade curve if you wanted to do it uh, in different ways as well. All right. So um, now that we have that, I'm going to undo that. So I want to actually cut this, um, this piece here. I'm going to actually cut it. So I'm going to hit uh, S on my keyboard and I'm going to delete this ending part. And what I want to do is bring this part back. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to click on it and hit duplicate, uh, control and D. And I will duplicate the sample over. So I'm going to loop it here just so we can kind of hear what I uh, set up here. Something real simple. So um, usually you might get like a click in the beginning. I'm going to hold alt and kind of stretch it out. So there may be like a click in the beginning of like your sample. You can always fade it using that, uh, the regular fade. When you see that triangle up there uh, at the top of your sample, you can actually do a fade in here, All right? And if you right click while you have this triangle up here, it'll give you an option to change it to a slow curve or a fast curve. Either way you wanna do it, you can just do like a slow curve. So basically it'll come in slow. Um, if you right click on here, you can do a fast curve. So where it'll kind of just jump into the track. Uh, this kind of eliminates the clicking that comes with samples when you're sampling it and you're usually trying to chop it up or cut it up. You'll usually hear like clicks. This will actually help you a lot with those clicks and pops that you get uh, when you're actually using samples. All right. So I'm gonna uh, delete this one and I'm gonna do a crossfade at the end here as well. And I'm going to zoom in just so I can get it a little better. I just want it to be really, really uh, sharp. 
basically just to make sure there's no pop when it goes over. And shrink it back. And I'm gonna duplicate this over. So now uh, it should run pretty smoothly when you're actually doing anything inside here. And I mean, it works for pretty much anything you want. So if you know you cut one of the, um, let's say we cut the, this kick here, right? All right, so let's say we wanted to kind of lower this one down. So if I do a split here, right? And I kind of uh, drag this one over, as you see, it's doing a crossfade. So I can crossfade that in into the mix right there in the middle of the track if I wanted to. And you can use this for vocals. This is really good on vocals when you have a, a piece in there like a pop or a click that you don't want. You can use these crossfades in order to eliminate that that pop that's actually in in the vocals. So this is what the crossfaders would be really good for. You know, and another way to actually do it is to go in and do like automation clip. And you can do automation for, you know, like your volume. I'm gonna do one for this one and I'm gonna actually open it up inside the lanes here. The automation lane right here. So let's say we wanted to, uh, we wanted to add one here. Or we say we wanted to fade this out, right? So let's go to the ending of it. All right, so I'm gonna click here. And usually, you know, you want about a bar or so um, to kind of work with. And I can just grab this this back piece here and just kind of bring this down. And now I have a fade uh, at the end of these, these drums. Right? And if you want it to, if you right click on here, it will give you an option to change your curve. Uh, you can do like a fast curve or a slow curve. Um, it makes it so much easier to kind of do uh, what you want in here. So let's say we wanted to do a fast curve and now it does a fast curve slope. I'm just gonna drag it down so you can see a little bit better. So now you'll see that you have a drag slope curve for this as well. And you can also add this to your master track. I'm gonna shrink the docking station. I'm just gonna pull this line, like usually when you have this little divider here, you can pull this up and you'll be able to see all your buses. So you can actually make an automation lane for this as well. So I can go here, go to automation. I can do a pan, I can do a volume going out, but we'll do an output one. So let's say we wanted to fade it like we did the other one. You could just click, make a node in here. These little dots are called nodes. And then you can just kind of drag this one down and it'll fade out exactly like that and you can just right click on here and do your fast curve and then you'll just have a nice fast curve for your master and it'll kind of look like that and these are most of the things that they have inside of cakewalk to help you guys out uh, whenever you're trying to do anything concerning uh cross fades or faders right so if you uh right click and you can do a blue line over all of these. You can even delete these nodes, hit delete on your keyboard and you can delete those nodes. If you don't want to use the automation and you just want to use the regular fade, you can just grab here and just grab across and fade those keys out. You can right click when I have the triangle there and do a fast curve and now it's fast curving at there at, right at the end. So basically, You've just learned the different methods of actually using the fades inside of Cakewalk, whether that be with automation or with the actual fade curves on side, inside the audio. It will work the same thing for your MIDI. So if you did have some MIDI in here, And as you see, the MIDI will actually work as well using the same methods. So if I wanted to do a fast curve here, I can do a fast curve and it will curve down there. Uh, if you want to do, uh, you know, 
slow curve here. You can do it to where it'll just kind of dip down uh, on here. Let me just pull it up a little bigger so you can see it. Oh yeah, and before I forget, I mean, there are other ways to kind of do um, cuts and fades in here. So let's say that we did, say we did a cut here, right? So I'm gonna hit um, S on the keyboard. I'm gonna do a cut here and I'm gonna do a cut over here, right? So if I highlight all of these, just right click over all of them, and I go up to clips, I can do fade clips. And what this will do is pull up this little dialog box. It's gonna say how much you want to fade in and how much you wanna fade out. So this is another way to actually do fades. So it'll do the, the beginning and the end of the fades. So if you had a whole bunch of vocals and you did a whole bunch of chops in there and you had a you know different spaces. All right, so let me just demonstrate, I guess. I'm gonna pull this one back, pull this one back, pull that one, and I think there's one more. All right, pull that one. All right, so say this is my vocals, right? And I right click on all of them, I highlight all of them, I go up here to clips, and when I go to clips, I'm gonna go to fade clips, it's gonna give up this dialog box. And what I can do here is actually change the fade in or fade out, and I can even fill in the gaps between the audio fade. So like you see, I have gaps here. It'll actually fill in those uh, fades here. And you can change how you want it to fade in if you want it a slow or fast curve for your in or your out. And see that I have already curves on here, some, uh, some already fades. I can change them and alter the existing curves to whatever I choose here. Uh, so if I hit OK, as you see here, I'm going to kind of zoom in. It gave a fade to all of the, the things inside the track. So all of them now have fades. And whether that be in or out. All right. So you can just do this on MIDI. You can do this on audio. And these are some of the ways you can actually fade inside of Cakewalk. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have like any questions, concerns, definitely leave them below in the comment section. You know I'll get back to you on those anytime you guys leave comments. Make sure you guys are following my Discord. Join the Discord. We have sample flips. We have uh, we playback beats for you guys. Definitely let me know uh, what you guys want to see next. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed. Once again, it's your boy, x.e.l.o. Till next time, people. Peace.